one. Earth. We detected no intelligent life on the surface, but Skyfire insisted we look closer. A polar windstorm came up suddenly, and Skyfire and I were separated. I circled half the globe searching for him, but he was gone. And now, millions of Earth years later, you have found him. John here guys and today we're talking about the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2. Now Emacs has been known for many many years for their excellent quality, their esteemed reputation, but one of the things they're known most for is coming out with reliable, affordable, easy to fly, small to behold solutions for both the beginner and expert crowd in FPV. Um, if you were learning to fly a drone for many, many years, Emacs was your place to go. And going into 2020, the Emacs Easy Pilot Ready to Fly kit is my recommendation for you. But once you have graduated from that kit and you want something uh, a little bit more robust, a little bit more capable, a little bit more speed, this is the latest iteration um, of their Tiny Hawk line and is the sequel as good as the original? Well, it does make a round of improvements uh, throughout the quad as well as the kit that it comes with. Um, Emacs is still using this beautiful hard, um, sort of a hard slash softish case that keeps the uh, quad quite safe. It has plenty of room to store lots of extras. It comes in the package with some actually very good directions. It has, um, you know, it's not a giant encyclopedia. You don't need that. All it shows you is how to bind, how to change your channels, and a few other things, and it is very clear. When I went to go figure out how to bind this thing, I was able to look on here for 30 seconds and knew exactly what I needed to do. Very easy, good job, guys. It comes with an extra set of these four bladed props. That's right, these are the Tiny Hawk V2 props that allow you to turtle mode. Of course, your Emacs stickers. Uh, it comes with two different batteries. It comes with a two cell 300 milliamp battery and it comes with a one cell uh, 450 battery. And that is the same battery that it shipped with the original Tiny Hawk. Now, in addition to that, you also have um, this charger. This allows you to charge two 1S batteries or two 2S batteries at the same time. Um, it's very nice. It has a signed Emacs uh, emblazoned logo on the bottom. Very nice. Plugs directly into USB. And then there's just a few little extras in the box. An extra pigtail, two of the extra little rubber bands that you use to hold your battery on, some little extra screws, and a tiny, tiny little screwdriver. Awesome. Um, so, what are the improvements here over the original Tiny Hawk? Well, there are quite a number uh, to choose from. Um, first of all, they have um, used a sort of similar reminiscent design, but it's been beefed up. Um, so that it is actually stronger. It still has that same great flexibility. It has this very light, sort of soft, but rigid enough to still fly very well in the air. Plastic that can bounce off your wall without leaving a mark. Very key. Um, the weight does move up just a little bit on this. Uh, it comes in at 31 grams. So that's about 10 grams heavier than your standard Tiny Whoop. And just a few grams heavier than the original um, Tiny Hawk. Now it still uses a prop down um, design here. That really allows you to have some great flight feel in a package this small. You really usually can't get um, a feel like this in something this small and this light that's safe to fly in your house. Uh, it has an adjustable camera mount. Finally, look at that cool thing. It looks almost like uh, it looks like a character on some sort of a cartoon show with this cool little fin at the top, almost like the Rocketeer or something. Um, in addition to that, um, the camera is absolutely upgraded. This is using the Runcam Nano 2. Now that has been my favorite camera for micros and five inch, my most used camera of 2019. And going into 2020, it is still an excellent option. Um, it only costs you about 16 to $20. 
uh, has the same sort of a D8 style receiver. You can um, hook it up to D16 using the FR Sky X protocol. I did that at first, but range was absolutely abysmal. I was barely able to get 15, 20 feet away before I was out of range. So if you don't have a radio that can do the D8 protocol, I'm using the Jumper T16, of course. So I was able to switch over to that protocol, no problem in a matter of seconds. And then it is quite usable. Um, one other cool addition are these little light up LEDs. And as you engage the motors and, and uh, engage your throttle, the LEDs will shine more and more brightly. Really, really cool. It is using a version of the same motors on the original Tiny Hack, an 0802.5 uh, Tiny Stator motor. Uh, this time they've lowered the KV down to 16,000. What that does with the four blader props is give you some really great handling and control on one S when using the smaller battery for indoors, but it still uh, will allow you to have two S power without having the KV too high. Now note, there is a very bright uh, warning on the inside of this case that tells you if you are doing 2S, make sure that you are on profile two in the PIDs. That's right, they have come out with a specialized tune for running two cell batteries. And if you're running that higher voltage of 7.2 volts instead of 3.7, you're gonna wanna use that alternate tune so you do not burn up these motors. Um, very cool that they have done that. Took a lot of the guesswork out for you. On the original Tiny Hawk, um, out of the box, it flew pretty good. This one, I feel like the tune is even better. And there are a variety of upgrade options as far as tunability is concerned. You can go over and check out the Project Mockingbird guys if you want a tune that is even better. For me, this thing flies just unbelievably good out of the box. Um, it does have a little bit extra weight, like I mentioned, guys, um, with... Uh, than your standard whoop. So you do have a little bit more inertia as you go into those tight turns. So you have to allow for that a little bit of additional turning radius. So you'll see me kind of bouncing against the walls because I've been flying a lot of those one cell 31 millimeter prop whoops. This is a 40 millimeter prop version. So it's more in line comparable to the Beta 75 uh, flavors, the Meteor 75 that just came out or the Mobula 7. Um, so while the Tiny Hawk was an incredible option at the time that allows you to do a lot of things good, but probably nothing the best, uh, going into 2020, this is an upgraded version on that same formula on pretty much every front. Turtle mode works great. Um, there was a couple times I couldn't get it to work, but for the most part, it worked just fine. It is nimble enough to be able to go on a whoop race course if you are very fast on the sticks uh, for going into really really tight spaces you a lot of people may be um, a little bit easier pressed to go with a 31 millimeter smaller whoop size so here is the size comparison with a lot of the other popular whoop models today this is the very popular beta fpv meteor 65 and as you can see it is a lot smaller this being a 65 millimeter size craft that uses 31 millimeter props this being closer to a 75 millimeter craft that uses 40 millimeter props this comes in at a weight about 22 23 grams this comes in right about 30 31 grams so it's almost uh it's quite a bit difference right so why is it that for me personally, I can fly the Tiny Hawk 2 through a lot smaller gaps more reliably? This thing has so much power, so much punch, it's just a little bit more difficult to control it uh, out of the box. Now you can put a lot of different tuning on both of these and make them both fly well. So this one's 22.7 grams, the Meteor 65, and then the Tiny Hawk 2 is 31.4 grams. So almost a 10 gram difference. Uh, and then here is my custom whoop that I made that I fly. That comes in at 23.9 grams. So that's pretty heavy. This is 0803 motors. This is a brush whoop. I'm going to have a review on this very soon. That is 25.4 grams. So that's even 
That's like right in the middle. This also flies very good. This is a silverware, very basic. This is only 45 bucks, but you need a jumper to fly it. So where should you put your hard earned money? Well, a lot of people will kind of comment on the fact that the Tiny Hawk 2 should be able to fly outdoors great on 2S and it does come with that 2S battery. But to be honest, I really was not that impressed with the 2S performance. Um, the battery performance of this on 2S is very similar to this on 1S. It just sags immediately. It doesn't last very long. Um, flying how I like to fly outdoors, I was probably going to get 60 to 70 seconds. So not a lot of flight time. I really prefer the way this thing flies um, indoors on 1S much, much better. The battery holder worked perfectly. These downward facing props really do give you a great amount of control. So you have a lot more control than you should have for something this large. And some of those maneuvers, like where I go through four or five chairs at a time, I really struggle to do that maneuver with this thing. Now, granted, if I put Project Mockingbird on here, it would make it much closer. Um, but uh, this really does have some great versatility and the flight times on this were really really good i also really like that you have an adjustable camera angle so you can adjust it quite low for flying indoors or crank it up if you really want to push the speed um, now note there are a lot of informal tiny whoop races that go on in my town i really hope to join those guys pretty soon but in some of the official tiny whoop style races something of this size may not be allowed some races it is, some races it's not. Some people feel like this exercise give you, gives you an unfair advantage. Now with these powerhouses, I would think that the speed of these two in a straight line are going to be very close. This thing is super powerful, but I just didn't have, feel like it had that much control out of the box. So I think I'm going to make a few adjustments to this, um, put a better tune on here, and then come back to the drawing boards. Um, so who is this for? The 2S outside is fun. It's more power, but it is not as much power as say like, I don't know guys, it's really hard. After flying all these two picks, do you really even want to fly something like this on 2S outside? Uh, I do appreciate that it has the prop guard. So if I had to fly it around like, you know, on a playground where there was you know, kids playing around, my nieces or nephews or whatever playing around, I would probably pick this just because it's a little safer. You don't need that extra speed, but for almost anything else, you would probably want to go with a standard toothpick for indoor only. You probably want to go for something 31 millimeters. I do like that this little battery holder on the underside can accommodate the 1S or the 2S batteries perfectly. Also like that they have the battery going across um, horizontally as opposed to up and down. That really gives you an excellent weight distribution. It makes this thing, along with the um, props pushing down, able to handle much better than almost anything else in this size category. Um, so again, it is a better version of that original formula which is, in my opinion, the best all-rounder. If you only had to have one quad that could fly indoors and outdoors um, and be very safe and nimble, this would be it. It's the best all-rounder. Uh, so Emacs has done it again. They have improved uh, things. This has a BTX that now goes 2,500, 100, and 200 milliwatts. So it's much more versatile, able to fly many more places. Um, they have finally given you a little bit more of a beefy um, receiver antenna right here, so you should have decent reception on both your video and controller. Keep in mind, guys, you have to have a radio that is compatible with D8. What do you think, guys, in the comments? Are you flying traditional loops? Are you flying something like this that can do everything pretty well, but not necessarily anything perfectly? This is really a great option. I really appreciate Emacs for doing this. This is so durable. It's so easy to not have to replace parts. I uh, love the charger option that it comes with. Thanks, guys.